Welcome into NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey. We are live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and on Rumble. We got producer Sam behind the scenes today for a fairly loaded show. We will talk trades in both our rumors and some trade candidates. Both of them feature DeAndre Hopkins because I think if we had said it would be the beginning of May and DeAndre Hopkins would not be close to a trade, I think we would all be fairly surprised by that. But that's where we are. There's been no real movement in the Hopkins trade. Now Hopkins saying he never wanted to be traded, which is really interesting. Wrong. Maybe not exactly uh, the reality of what had happened there. So will DeAndre Hopkins be traded? Why for yes and for no? Sam? Uh, that in the business is what we call a good old-fashioned bold-faced lie. Or spin. Who the Hopkins? Sure, we'll, if you want to call we'll break it, that. it down. But um, he's lying. He, uh, he did not want to be there. That's why he has to be traded. Somebody's lying because Von Miller said that DeAndre Hopkins wants to be a Bill. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins was talking to Des Bryant about the Cowboys, and then Pac-Man Jones, who was tight with Hopkins, was or, sorry, Adams was like, "Hey, you know, could be one of these three teams. Like, I wonder where Adams get his information from." So it's all very uh, interesting. Uh, of all of a sudden Hopkins saying he's not doing anything about that one. So, okay. Will he be traded? Why for yes and for no? 71% still voting yes. Robert Prince says no. Steven Jr. Uh, Jr., yes, excuse me. Joshua Prince in there says yes. Uh, let's see, we got Robert Janston says no more than a fourth or fifth for Queen. We'll get to him later on. Uh, Seabass says uh, yes, no. Anonymous says, LOL. Juan Hernandez, Yellow Kid, Melissa, all spamming in their Ys for yes. Casey the Sledge says yes. Now, I wonder how many of those are just people who want DeAndre Hopkins on their team. Will he be traded? Y for yes, N for no. Luigi says no. Primo Miller won't be traded. More likely cut. The contract isn't exactly the most cuttable, but that certainly would draw some free agency frenzy on Hopkins. Uh, I see Bills, Falcons in there. Richard says yes. Pro Gamers says yes. Keep the comments coming. Why for yes and for no. Now, in general, and someone already answered with the whole with the Patrick Queen part, name a player who you think ends up getting moved. We'll run through some top post-draft trade candidates around the NFL. But name a player who you think ends up getting traded. Hopkins, of course, is too easy, so pick somebody else in the comment section for that answer. Player you think gets traded. Uh, I see Dalvin Cook in there from Yellow Kid. We'll talk about him in our trade candidate section. Buda Baker, is Dalvin cuttable? Yes, Dalvin is cuttable. Uh, his contract is a little bit easier. Let me, I think I get the actual nitty-gritty here on the Hopkins contract for, the, uh, for that perspective. Dalvin's is very doable for a release. Hopkins, well, if you do it after June 1st, it's, it's more manageable. But you cut him right now, you only save $8 million, which isn't the best from that perspective, not getting anything back in exchange. But it is doable, I suppose. A lot of Patrick Queens in there. Hunter Renfro, not a bad one. Dorrance Armstrong, Chase Young, Malik Willis. Uh, there's a Renfro for Queen trade idea. That I think a few people have thrown in there. Austin Eckler, Isaiah Simmons, Dorrance Armstrong, Jonah Williams. I wonder if no one wants him at the contract. That, that, that's a big thing we often overlook. I think that is also what's happening with DeAndre Hopkins. The contract is a big negative factor in the trade value conversations there. But Jonah Williams is a good one. Isaiah Simmons, another name in there. Keep the comments coming. Name a player you think gets traded. And we'll also talk power rankings on today's show. The Chat Sports staff has ranked them all. We've averaged it out 32 to 1. Who is the number one team in the NFL? Go ahead and answer that question for me in the comment section. I think we'll have a lot of the same answers here, Sam. Should be the Chiefs. Should be the Chiefs. You'd be crazy to put something else. Or, you know, you'd be wrong. But you're welcome to type something else. There you go. A lot of Chiefs in there. Daniel, Yellow Kid, Corey Redding, Casey the Sledge. Story throwers going with the Raiders. Aaron R. says Eagles slash Chiefs. Robert says Bears. So does Richard, the number one Bears fan. The Chiefs, the Chiefs, the Chiefs, the Chiefs, the Eagles from Mr. Awesome Guy 222. Two, two. Bill says Philly. 
RC Plane Builder, our Falcons fan, says Falcons are underrated. Uh, Eagles, especially without Gannon. And they got a better draft pick for losing Gannon. That was a pretty big win for Philadelphia. Uh, Nick says Chiefs. Rotero says Go Birds. Uh, Naroz says Eagles. Raiders for Life says Eagles. So it's mostly Chiefs, then Eagles, and something tells me we'll get a similar answer when we get to our power rankings later on in today's show. This answer, well, I think I know it, but do you guys think it as well? Jordan Love got a contract extension, a creative way around the fully guaranteed fifth-year option. Now he gets not quite the fully guaranteed fifth-year option, but a little bit more upside overall. Is Jordan Love the answer for Green Bay? Now, I do believe it is in the bylaws of the Geneva Convention or one of those uh, agreements that you can't have three Hall of Fame quarterbacks in a row. That is illegal and outlawed which would be the case for Jordan Love. This, this would be the, the, third, the third Hall of Fame quarterback if Jordan Love ends up being great. So, is he the answer? Here. Yes or no? I was sitting here trying to think who came after Montana and Young. I don't know who it was, but it's like, man, if only he was a Hall of Famer or the guy before him. Not how it works. Does Tony Romo go to the Hall of Fame? Maybe Dak's got a shot. No. <laughs> Romo's not. Now, if Romo gets in, it's like an, an announcer. But football-wise, no, he's not, he's not getting in there. Uh, mostly no's coming in here. Uh, Robert needs to find him, then who? Well, that's the problem. You know, they don't have one. Uh, very rare to look into the level of stability uh, the Packers have had at the quarterback position. I think, I think Jess is right, by the way. I think it was Jeff Garcia. Now, to be fair, that's the only quarterback I know around that time frame or can remember for San Francisco. So, like, pretty sure it was Jeff Garcia, but I don't remember if that was true or not. I mean, in that case, the theory's still alive. <laughs> exactly. Has, hasn't happened yet. So, is Jordan Love the answer? Why for yes, N for no. Aaron says we don't know, which is true, but we're going to have fun. So tell me what you think the answer ends up being. It's, it's a multiple choice question. You, you got to guess one to get, give yourself a chance at getting credit. Now, if you are excited about the 2023 NFL season, like we certainly are, the NFL schedule release is a week and one day away. That's the expectation there. Like the video, if you are hyped about the upcoming season, there's about 200 people watching and yet 22 likes. That is a very disappointing ratio. Let's get that changed. Like the video if you are excited about football, excited about the NFL season. I know it's going to be a little bit. We've got, you know, mini camps, training camps in June, July, and then preseason in August, and those three months feel oh so far away. But it will come here before you know it. So like the video you are hyped about the 2023 NFL season. Coming up on today's live show, NFL news and rumors. We'll break down the latest free agency moves, a bunch of signings. We're going to get to uh, multiple different signings made here in the last 24-ish hours. Not one, but two NFL mailbags. You can use hashtag NFL or Super Chat to get on the show as Sam. What's it's, up? In case you want to get in the Quay for today's show. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I, was, uh, I thought just, that's something important to say. Yeah, two that ways. That makes sense. Hashtag NFL or I don't know what I expected. That, that, that was on me. Or Super Chat. Skip the line. We'll get you on the show guaranteed. We will also run through the Chat Sports' post-NFL draft power rankings. Drafts in the books. Some minor roster moves being made. We'll run down the top teams from 32 to 31. And we will look at the top NFL trade candidates. Got a bunch of different names who could be moved with the draft now over. All coming up right here live on NFL Daily. Welcome into NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey, hitting all the latest NFL rumors and a bunch of news on today's show as well. We begin once again with the latest on DeAndre Hopkins. Of course, the Cardinals did not trade Nuke during the NFL draft, and now Hopkins is saying they didn't want to be traded in the first place. They don't know where that information was coming from. Uh, very important to make note. Uh, multiple people said they had talked to Hopkins, NFL players such as Von Miller, former ones like Des Bryant, and the buzz was that, in the, or in Von's case, straight up said Hopkins wanted to be in Buffalo. So that is noteworthy. And then, you know, Adam Jones, who was clearly close to Hopkins, was making comments about it. And the Cardinals gave DeAndre Hopkins permission to speak a trade. So when DeAndre Hopkins says this, I see everybody telling me to stay. Who said I want to go? Who said I want to leave? I'm out here working, baby. Well, I mean, 
he did, right? At least a little bit. Like, clearly, like, there was an issue with the relationship between Hopkins and Arizona, and he had told other NFL players he wanted to play there, and there have been multiple reports of Buffalo, KC, Dallas, that Hopkins wanted to end up playing there. So, with Von Miller tell, or with Hopkins telling Von Miller, Adam Jones, etc., Des Bryant, that he had interest in playing for a different team, well, that means Nuke did. He's the one who said it. You don't really get to have it both ways of tease and toy with one fan base, then if it doesn't go down, come back to Arizona and say, I, I, I never wanted to leave. What are you talking about? There were issues. I think the contract is a big one and why he hasn't been moved. I know that Rapport has said uh, Hopkins is open to adjusting his deal or doesn't want to be the highest paid receiver. I do think Hopkins wants the money he's at least in, in line to make right now, and that's about $20 million each year the next two years. A little bit less next year, actually. But that's that's a lot of money for a guy that's missed time the past two years. And I still think it's really good. I am surprised has not been moved, but the Cardinals have not yet found a match. Now, they, uh, I think, are the Texans to bid against themselves for the number three overall pick. Well done, Arizona. But the, their own GM has said, no one's offered what I want. And I think that was about a second-round pick. At the age contract, no one wanted to move that for Hopkins. So unless the asking price drops... Or the contract drops at some point. Doesn't really seem to make the most sense. So there is still time. The trade deadline, the uh, the NFL season starting in September. Let's say by week one, because we'll revisit it again after the deadline, I'm sure. Will DeAndre Hopkins be traded? Sound off at the pinned comment of today's video. Why for yes and for no if the ad break comes here. Perfect time. Take advantage of it. Head down there. Why or N. Let's talk Jared Goff now. As the report out of Detroit, the, the Detroit Free Press, is that the Lions are trending towards an extension for Jared Goff at some time in the next 15 months. We're going to come back to that. Uh, the, the Lions drafted Hen Hooker this past year in the third round. That's kind of in your buffer range of like, he's going to be a great backup. He might be our future starter. Uh, Jared Goff has two years left on his deal, and he also counts almost $31 million against the salary cap this year. An extension would bring that down in the short term. But I want to be clear on this. Uh, an extension happening in the next year and a half is not a sign of a commitment. You're not trending towards an extension if your timeline is after this upcoming season. That is a, let's see what happens, and then we'll make a decision on Goff's long-term future. That is not a sign of commitment, a sign of, yes, this is our guy, when he's got two years left on his deal and he's counting $31 million per in the cap. That's not... You know, letting the year play out and then go into a contract year and then maybe pay him is not, that is not a commitment. That is not trending towards an extension. I've never quite seen a prove it year spun in that way. It's very impressive, Detroit. Well done. There are three levels to Jared Goff's game. There is Jared Good when he plays well, which we saw a decent amount of in 2022 at his best with the LA Rams. There's also Jared Goof, which is why the Rams moved on from him. And then the middle there, of course, is Jared Goff. Hendon Hooker, meanwhile, could maybe be a solution down the road. Probably not this year. Uh, he only just started throwing before the NFL Combine, so he's not exactly a immediate impact player from that perspective. I'll also make note that Hendon Hooker is three years younger than Jared Goff, which is kind of crazy, but that's the case. Hooker's 25 right now. Goff's 28. He turns 29 in October, but I'm going to spin my narrative anyway. Uh, so maybe Hooker's the, the long-term solution for uh, the Detroit Lions, and maybe they do get great play out of Jared Goff, and they become the playoff team that, as weird as this is, we all think they should be this upcoming year. Where does Goff for you guys rank among NFL quarterbacks? Sound off in the comment section right now. Let's stick in the NFC North. We'll talk Jordan Love. A rather creative solution here for the Packers. The fifth-year option is now fully guaranteed when you pick it up. You can't then cut a player before week one. That's kind of the dicey part uh, from this perspective. The deadline for the fifth-year option was on Tuesday. Just before that deadline arrived, the Packers and Love got a long-term, well, not a long-term deal, done, but a new deal done. One-year extension at $22.5 million with $13.5 million guaranteed. So this is a, it's in between make Love prove it 
and run the risk of Daniel Jones in yourself and also still giving Love a little bit of guaranteed money without fully declining or accepting the fifth-year option. So it's kind of a creative middle ground solution that does still edge more towards the we believe in Jordan Love side, which is a gamble for the Green Bay Packers. Look, they spent a first-round pick on him, and he's barely played. One start uh, over 10 games, 660 yards passing, three touchdowns, three interceptions. The sample size is not exactly a large one, and it's very tough to have a firm answer one way or the other when you're only throwing a couple of passes per game on average. You just you don't really know what he is. Now, Green Bay, in theory, has the best solution or the best answer to that, although we've seen teams think they have the guy and then they don't. So is Jordan Love the answer for Green Bay? Can they have three straight franchise QBs with no beat in between from Favre to Rodgers to Love? Why for yes and for no, sound off for us in the comment section. This contract the Packers gave Jordan Love kind of covers their bases in the event that the answer is yes. That if he is the answer, they actually got him well below market value and they can work on a long-term deal alongside of it. So it is kind of a middle ground. They're not going to risk it all on Love. If they miss, they'll pay a little bit extra money, but less than they would have had they picked up the fifth-year option. So... I don't mind the contract for Green Bay. They're just going to have to hope that it ends up being a good one. Now, if you want the best chat sports coverage around the NFL, I mean, what more could you possibly want than what we have for you? Hit that sub button right now. YouTube.com slash chat sports TV. Free videos every single day, multiple times per day when you hit that sub button right now. Let's run through the updated NFL free agency tracker for you guys. Several moves made as of late beginning with a former Packer. Randall Cobb is joining the New York Jets on a one-year deal. Contract details not yet known. Again, you will not be able to convince me that this isn't a Rodgers-focused move because Randall Cobb is not good anymore, and yet Aaron Rodgers continues to absolutely love him. The Bengals have a new quarterback. To back up Joe Burrow, of course. Trevor Simeon, the former Bears QB, now takes over in Cincinnati as Burrow's backup, while the previous backup, Brandon Allen, is going to the 49ers. So he will slot in behind Trey Lance, Sam Darnold, Brock Purdy, if he's healthy for week one. Probably means Allen would make the roster, but it gives them a veteran option in the event that there is and remains the Brock Purdy injury concern. Puna Ford, I love this deal. We don't have the details yet. I am very curious what it ends up looking like, but Puna Ford was one of the better available defensive linemen on the open market. He is a really good fit for what the Bills would like to do, kind of that undersized, i.e. not 30 pounds, one technique there. Puna Ford was the guy that I had my eye on for several different teams. The Bills end up landing him. Love that addition. They also have added Latavius Murray, and the contract details are known. One year, $1.32 million, $800,000 is guaranteed. That is the type of contract, after the Bills did not draft a running back, indicates that Murray will be on this football team. He'll be there behind James Cook, etc. So a big addition there for Buffalo in terms of the backup running back role. There's enough guarantee to make think he will make this team. Houston, meanwhile, has brought back Eric Tomlinson for a second stint. He is a blocking tight end. We will see if he ends up making the roster. And finally, moments ago, O'Shane Zimenez, a one-year deal to re-sign. Not finally, I forgot about one more. Thank you, Sam. Uh, a one-year deal for the came back-to-back. One-year deal for the New York Jets. He'll fight for a depth roll. And then the big-time one of today's, at least, is Rocky Sint. Getting a one-year deal worth up to $6 million. Uh, the Ravens had brought Rocky Sin in previously. You're asking why the flurry of moves? Well, that's in large part because the NFL uh, comp pick formula is no longer impacted by signings with one like Rocky Sin, which probably would have counted, could have cost the Ravens a fourth-round pick for Ben Powers. They avoid that by signing Rocky Sin to the one-year deal after the NFL draft. He could start very quickly for the Ravens or at least be a great backup. All right, back to the pin poll here, Sam. Why for yes and for no will DeAndre Hopkins be traded? I'm going to go the no. Water, thank you. I'm going to I'm going to go with yes, but at the deadline. Like you think he starts the year in starts Arizona? Starts the year in Arizona and they move they ship him off at the deadline. Cuz then the money's a little bit less expensive. 
I wonder who's going to be who, who's even going to be catching passes from for the first not ten weeks. Colt McCoy. Yikes. That's, Maybe. Uh, I, I, I think there's a real possibility. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they signed Jeff Driscoll. It's true. <laughs> right. Right now it is Kyler Murray, Hurt, Colt McCoy, Clayton Toon, Jeff Driscoll, David Blau. Hey, give Clayton a Toon team. Some... The team is winning two games until Kyler comes back. If he comes back, give Clayton Toon some early reps. I like see what Clayton Toon, but like you know, he's a fifth rounder, so like I'm not going to assume he's going to be great. Like, if you know you're going to be bad already, play him instead of Colt McCoy. Yes, I, I would give the young guy a chance, but they might try to like win games early on and survive until Kyler gets back. If he's, I don't know if he's back for week one. And then Arizona's got two, potentially two two top five picks. Could be a, could be a new QB next year in Arizona. Just just keep, keep that in mind. Uh, I see two Chicago. Uh, I see still some yeses, although like the pin poll, Sam, is now down to 62% yes. Was up there in the mid-70s at the beginning of the show. I was going to say, I think we should take it right down the middle there and uh, aim for a nice... 69 Wow, Tom. I, I didn't say that. You. Yeah, but that's what you're going for. That's real perverted of you, dude. <laughs> if you say so. Um, I see Tank with Arizona. Rosario says yes. Uh, Logan Car- Carruthers says yes. Michael Shamari People says yes. Jose says YN. So I guess that's both of them there. All right, we will have a mailbag now on today's show. One of the first of two of them. Best chance to question answered is to super chat. If you do that, we will answer it. If you just want to use hashtag NFL, that does put you in the. Uh, you'd be hopping in the quay there. Yeah, yeah. The queue to get your questions on air. You are at the mercy, of course, of producer Sam picking them. But get your questions in right now. Hashtag NFL in the comment section or super chat if you want to skip the line altogether. So, Carter, I see your question in there. Uh, James Heiner, I, I see you in there too. So, keep the cut the questions coming. Throw them in there. You only need to do it like one time, right, Sam? Because it'll be safe at that, yeah. that point? Yeah. Yeah, just once. And uh, I always give the 60 second promise as long as Tom stops talking when I tell him to stop talking, you'll su- your super chat will be on screen within 60 seconds. If not, you jump in the quay, and uh, we'll see what happens. We do have two mailbags today, though. Yes, so two mailbags. Hopefully, we'll be able to answer a ton of questions. Yeah. So throw your questions in right now. If you're not using, if you're not super chatting, it has to be hashtag NFL. Otherwise, we can't actually find them on the graphic side. So you're just kind of. It lost. doesn't get in the quay. I don't. I can't control the quay. What? What? Why do I encourage you to do this? Why? I don't understand. I don't know. You. You literally lobbed it. I. Up I, for I, me. I did. And I you was, lobbed I, it up for me. I was trying to be D, nice. You lobbed it up for me. D Wade to LeBron, where you're just spreading your arms as I'm about to slam it home. You get to do it for this one, but for the second one, no, absolutely not. Get in the quay. Hashtag NFL or Super Chat. All right. Sound off in the comment section then with your questions using hashtag NFL right now. You guys are watching NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey. It is a mailbag. You should pretty much know what that is. Self-explanatory. Any question that comes in during our live show, we answer. This was filmed on our Wednesday live show. We begin with Raiders for life. I want Leonard Floyd or Miles Jack to go to the Raiders. I think those are decent ideas. Uh, The addition of Tyree Wilson and Byron Young, I think they're actually in okay shape up front. Linebacker, I believe in Divine Diablo, but I think Miles Jack could be a nice veteran piece. I would love a corner in Vegas. Sam and I talked about, about, about this pre-show. The cornerback room is not exactly a uh, loaded one for Vegas. RC Plane Builder 2, his second account. How about DeAndre Hopkins to Atlanta? The Falcons, I do believe, have the money to at least make it work, but they also have Kyle Pitts and Drake London, and they want to be a run-first football team. I don't know if they want to invest the amount of money in Hopkins or the trade asset in Hopkins for a team that just isn't going to throw the football enough to make it worthwhile, hence why they drafted Bijan in round one. So I, the, the need is there. Like He's a much better version than, than Matt Collins. Like, that's just an instant upgrade button. hit like five times. I just don't think the organizational philosophy is enough for Hopkins to fit in Atlanta, at least for the current or, c- construction. James Heiner. Do you believe the Saints will start the rookie they drafted in the event of the legal situation regarding Kamara leads to a suspension? I do think there is a very good chance that there is an Alvin Kamara suspension. Uh, That seems quite likely there. As it relates to Kendra Miller, the TCU running back, I would say it's a split committee between him and Jamal Williams. Maybe Jamal gets some of your early down work, the, the the, the short yardage. 
probably an even split. I, I wouldn't worry that much about the starting aspect. But touch-wise, yes, there will be plenty of opportunities for Kendra Miller in year one, especially if and or when Kamara gets suspended. From Carter Reimer, could, should Miami trade for Evan Ingram? I don't think that's a great fit. I think, if anything, Miami wants a better run-blocking tight end, but they also took Elijah Higgins, not much of a blocker. The Jags are also unlikely to trade him. I know they spent a second-round pick on Bretton Strange. I think the franchise tag for a year is the most likely outcome for Evan Ingram. Uh, it'd be a fun fit on in the offense because of the dynamic ability Ingram brings as a pass catcher, but the run blocking is just not. You kind of had that in Mike Isicki, didn't you? From Edwin Garcia, is Caleb Williams a lock for the number one pick? I would not say lock because we've been down this road with highly touted prospects. Everyone thought Spencer Rattler was the number one overall pick last year, and he's still in school. Because he wasn't good at Oklahoma his, his last year. Sam Howe was supposed to be great. And then he was a fifth-round pick. Although he gets a chance to start this year. So, Caleb is minus like 500 or 600 uh, to be the number one pick, which is a massive number uh, in, from that perspective. That's unheard of favorites, you know, like Trevor Lawrence-esque, you know, with the draft having just now ended. So, he's the heavy favorite. I would, I would bet he's the guy, but I'm not going to call it a lock at this point. Who do you think will end up being the number one overall pick? Is it going to be Caleb Williams? Maybe it's a non-quarterback needy team and they take Marvin Harrison. Or maybe it's a Drake May. Get those answers in the pinned comment of today's video. If the ad break comes here on the YouTube side, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. From Logan Carruthers, do you think Trey Lance is a bust? I have been disappointed so far. Um, if Lance does not take a massive step forward this year, the answer is probably going to be a yes. We also haven't had a chance to see much out of Trey Lance at this stage. Like, he has played a handful of games. Last year it was a monsoon game, and then he broke his ankle. So he didn't really get anything to judge off him. That's why I, I, I am not out on Trey Lance, but I am nervous about Trey Lance. And uh, on the spectrum, it's closer to bust than hit, but I'm not, I'm not calling it a locked and loaded done deal quite yet. From Aaron R., a $5 super chat. Thank you, Aaron. Where do you think Zeke gets signed? I've heard Bill since March, but here we are in May with no signing. Will he start having my dynasty fantasy football league? Uh, the Bills signed Latavius Murray, so I'm crossing them off the list. I know he had he, Zeke had one of the Eagles, Jets, and Bengals, and they all traded or drafted a running back in, uh, early on. My initial prediction, and I'm still going to ride with it, how about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Tampa Bay signed an undrafted free agent in Sean Tucker. And then right now it's Rashad White, uh, Chase Edmonds, and Keyshawn Vaughn. Like, I could be second best back on the team, if not third. So I do think Zeke gets signed. I, I don't think there's been much interest in him at his, his age, workload, and just straight up production. $2 from Shamari Peoples. It's Christian Gonzalez, the JC Jackson replacement. Uh, similar, I suppose, ish. Uh, just you know, cornerbacks, and ideally the new number one corner for New England. So sure, outside guy for Gonzalez. Not quite the feast or famine uh, interception guy that J.C. Jackson was. It's a great pick by New England. Uh, you know, if he can have a J.C. Jackson s career minus this past year in L.A., that's an awesome outcome for New England. We are live every week, folks, answering your questions. So if you want to be a part of the mailbags then you've got to be subscribed. So hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. From Jess, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre were both top two quarterback pros before being drafted. Jordan Love was fifth, in his, uh, fifth best in his class. He's not going to be a Hall of Famer. I don't think so either, but the previous two guys were, so hence the question of is he the answer. And again, it's outlawed because that's cheating if Green Bay gets three in a row. Robert, Falcons predictions after the draft. It all comes down to Desmond Ritter. If Desmond Ritter plays, you know, at a league average level, they might win the division in the NFC South. If they if he doesn't, Atlanta's probably drafting in the top 10 and they're probably getting a new quarterback and building around him and what is honestly kind of a decent supporting cast. Atlanta thinks they can win the division this year. We shall see if that happens. Richard Iacocco, Bears fan number one. You think Bears running back Roshan Johnson will be the number one back this year? 
Uh, I think he'll be the short yardage back. I think he'll be some pass protector stuff. I actually really like Khalil Herbert. Uh, between Roshan Johnson, Khalil Herbert, Deonta Foreman, you know, Travis Homer can be your special teams back. I think all three guys will get chances. I think Herbert brings you a little bit more explosive run ability, and I crave that because it's harder to find. Um, I love the Roshan Johnson pick. I, I kind of want to go Herbert, though. Robert Olmstead. Tony Pollard goes for 1,300 rushing yards. Deuce Vaughn goes for 650. Micah Parsons wins Defensive Player of the Year. That's a lot of running uh, yards for Pollard and Deuce Vaughn, especially for a six-round pick. Might be a little bit on the optimistic end. Mike has also been runner-up Defensive Player of the Year for back-to-back -back years, so that one is certainly not a bold prediction. We got Jerry's Burner here asking about Zeke back to the Cowboys. I don't think so. Um, I, I think that the more likely outcome is that Zeke goes somewhere else. I think it makes sense for both sides to have a clean break. Now, if Zeke can't find the new team and the Cowboys come camp time or middle of camp looking for a short yardage back, maybe a reunion could make some sense, but I, I think Zeke's looking to go somewhere else and kind of kickstart the career again. So where do you think Ezekiel Elliott ends up signing? Sound off in the comment section. Who signs Ezekiel Elliott? Casey the Sledge, uh, which high draft pick quarterback is best positioned to make it work long term? It's a great question. Um, I want to believe, I think like the, the best landing spot for me was probably Indy. I like Shane Steichen. They've invested some in the offensive line receiving room in recent years. It's also the most uh, upside gamble pick at the quarterback position. If Carolina had DJ Moore, I would still pick them, but they give up a lot for him. I also like Frank Reich a decent amount. Uh, Houston should be a decent spot. I still want to get some more playmakers for them. Uh, from that perspective. So we'll have to wait and see uh, on that one. As producer Sam uh, did not live up to his 60-second guarantee, as Ryan, a $2 super chat. Thank you, Ryan. How good do you think Bryce Young will be? I think Bryce Young can be that top seven-ish quarterback, top five quarterback in the NFL. I don't think he'll surpass Mahomes or even Burrow anytime soon. But if you get top seven, top five, really happy there. The size is a, a concern, but if he can overcome it, he has the playmaking to thrive in the NFL. Richard Effler, chances Titans trade for a wide receiver. I don't know how many options there are from that perspective. Like, of, like maybe, ooh, you know what's a good name there? How about KJ Hamler to Tennessee? Gamble on the former early round pick. I still think a lot of their guys, Kyle Phillips, Sean Burks, are best in the slot. They are probably going to use a lot of two tight end sets. This year is my guess because they didn't really address the spot that I think Tennessee's been searching for for a while. Josh Wiley in the fifth, Chico Conquo in the fourth last year is actually a really good one-two punch. But you know, Jacob Copeland, Colton Dowell, the draft and UDFAs, it's Traylon Burks, Kyle Phillips, Nick Westbrook-Akina. Hoping they sign somebody. So that's, that's not a very good wide receiver room. Dominic Schrader. Cardinals move for Kyler and Hopkins and get a first, then draft Caleb Williams, Ron Harris, and a defensive player, Kalen King. I don't think you can get a first right now for Kyler and Diop, and the Kyler contract can't be moved at this point. Now, next year, if Kyler does not play, if Kyler sits out half the season and they're at a playoff race and he goes, I'm just going to ride the bench the rest of the way, I could see Kyler being moved. If Arizona has the number one overall pick, they're going to Kyler Murray – they're, they're going to have the Josh Rosen, Kyler Murray thing all over again. Kyler's going to get Kylered, as weird as that might, or Kyler's going to get Rosened, I guess. And then they draft Caleb Williams, get Marvin Harrison, trade those two guys away, get picks, draft defensive players. Maybe not right now, maybe soon, Dominique. Mr. Awesome Guy 222, besides the Eagles and Niners, could any team make the playoffs if they were in the AFC? That's a good question. Might come down to which division they're in. Uh, our Power Rankings video will be linked in the comments if you're watching on demand. Um, I could see a scenario where, like, I think Dallas makes some sense. And depending on how good the Lions actually are, I think they could. At that, I think that's like you're probably pushing for more of a wild card spot for both of those teams, but those are the only two I'd really consider. Sorry, Giants. Gold Fox 177. What uh, vet, or super chat five dollars? 
Uh, should the Cowboys sign a vet receiver or corner? Also, could Fournette be an option for a cheap vet running back? Fournette could be. I think that's kind of just like having Zeke, but same, same, but different type of deal. Like it's it's the exact same player at this stage in their careers. Um, I don't think corners of vet need that they have Jordan Lewis. They're actually pretty deep right now with recent draft picks, and they traded for Stephon Gilmore. I think Brandon Cooks was the addition at wide receiver. You have Fehoko, you have uh, third round pick Jalen Tolbert. I don't think those two areas are big concerns right now for Dallas, but running back absolutely could be in the not too distant future. From just why is Jadavion Clowney unsigned? I know what he's going for. I'm I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of the full name. Just a, y'all can read. Why is Jadavion Clowney unsigned? Uh, he hasn't been that productive as a pass rusher. And he burnt bridges in Cleveland. He frankly uh, went full on napalm with them uh, when he made the comments about they're not trying to win games. They're putting Miles Garrett in the better positions to get the sacks. That's all they care about. And that, that did not go well across the NFL. He's going to have to wait. And the pass is waiting because he didn't want to go to camp. He's going to wait a little bit. Who do you think is the best NFL free agent left unsigned at this point? Sound off in the comment section for me. Who's the best one? 2.0. What is Chase Young worth in a trade? I think worth and what the commanders might be asking for uh, is are two different things. Uh, I think they would want like a first round pick, which is too much for a guy that has not been held for the past two years. A second or a third for Chase Young? Like, uh, he was very good his first year, but he hasn't played that much the past two seasons. And that is a big red flag for teams. From Manny, how big of a gap is there between the Cowboys and the Eagles? I think most people around sports media sort of have the Eagles have the Cowboys, which I agree with. Um, I don't think it's that big. I think those are the two clear teams of the tops in the NFC East. Maybe it's just like a tier break between them. Remember, they did split last year. Now neither team had their starter, uh, so I'm very. Uh, we were deprived the rubber match of having Dak and Jalen get to play against the two of the. I think two of the two best quarterbacks in the NFC. Right, right. Two two best quarterbacks in the NFC. The, 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 those two guys. Sorry, Kirk Cousins, etc. I don't think there's a. I don't think there's a giant gap there. And last one, XD Gamer 22, Unique Ngakwe to the Jags. A reunion, you say? Uh, let's see, Jags have uh, Josh Allen. They still have uh, Caleb on Jason, yeah, who maybe, maybe, maybe have isn't the, the right word there for him. Trayvon Walker. Uh, he spent a decent premium pick on Jordan Smith last year. You see Abdullah. If he's cheap enough, yes. I just wonder how that relation between player and, or and organization is right now. Now, Sam, apparently it is Montana Day. Well, we've determined by now you can just make a day for anything. And by the way, who decides that it's National Montana Day? Does Montana, the state, decide it? I was going to say, do day? they just claim it? Like, I, I want to know the, the legislative process behind making some of these bullshit days. Because this is a fake day. It's like national... Uh, national, here's, the, here's what annoys me. National Bacon Mac and Cheese Day. Can we have one of those? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a petition to make one of those. Here's what I don't understand. Wouldn't you think the... Na as, as, by the way, shout out your state in the comment section. Wouldn't you think that the day would just be the date they were either like designated as a territory or inducted into the union, right? So, right? So that's what I would think. I'd imagine if we're, following, if we're following PD's birthday theory... There's got to be a little bit of crossover between some of those days, too. I mean, so we maybe. can't have, like, National Montana Day and National Rhode Island Day on the same day. Look, all I know is it was a territory on May 26th. Not today. And uh, a state on November 8th. Definitely not today. So, wh so why are we doing it today? Like, like Monta May 26th is perfect, right? I don't think any other state has that day claimed. <laughs> I, I just like I'm, I'm I'm looking at like the major dates. So maybe there's one I don't know about, but I'm, May I'm not third, saying May 3rd. I like what's the what's the importance? Who whichever state chooses to claim May the 4th is does not deserve to be celebrated. That, that is Star Wars day. I agree. I I agree. So uh Seabass is mad at me for saying receiver wasn't a big need. I would we were screaming it was. They did trade for Brandon Cooks but by the way. I did see And some. and whether we agree or disagree 
they're going to give Tolbert and Gallup another shot this year, especially I, Gallup because they restructured his contract. I did see someone in the chat earlier that was upset with because, uh, well, I think they thought that I don't know how to pronounce Quay. Of course I know how to pronounce Quay. See, it's I don't... Quay. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't yes, know. I know it's pronounced Q. I'm, now I'm just going back trying to figure out. Robert Jansen. Shout out Robert Jansen. Always watching the show. I'm not eight years old. I'm not... I, I, I swear I'm not stupid. Uh-huh. I know that it's Q. It's just a fun little thing I like to do to annoy Tom. You do look kind of eight years old there. All right, I guess some shout-outs here. Then we'll, then, we'll get, Wrong. Then, then we'll get to our power rankings. Check my ID. I can drink, dude. I, I would not so publicly admit that you have a fake. Uh, your, your FBI agent is listening. I do, have a, I do have a fake. It's sitting somewhere at home. It's my old fake. All right, now you're under arrest. <laughs> Freeze! <laughs> Wisconsin, happy Texas Day, London. Um... Uh, let's see, we got uh, Illinois in there, Idaho as well. Keep the comments coming. Shout out your state in the... Yeah, I'll do the code over there. So. Shout out your state as we get ready for the next segment, Power Rankings here on NFL Daily. We're about to break down our post-NFL draft power rankings here at Chat Sports. If you are excited about the still somehow too far away, yet also not too far away, 2023 NFL season, like the video right now as we break down from 32 to 1, our 2023 post-NFL draft power rankings. Important note before we get going here, this is an AP poll style average voting of all the different chat sports employees here. So everyone got a chance to vote. We averaged it and there were some uh, disagreements. Important thing to consider, if there's something you like about the rankings, that was probably because of me. You're welcome. If there's something you did not like, it's not my fault. Blame anybody else. Let's begin at 32. The Arizona Cardinals. Have you looked at their defensive depth chart lately and their offensive unit without Kyler Murray? It's bad. They are rebuilding in a massive way this year. I was actually a bit higher on Indianapolis. They are number 31. How good is Anthony Richardson going to be in his first year? There's plenty of upside and plenty of doubt that it will be an overnight uh, development for him. Houston at number 30. I think we all agreed here at Chat Sports. They're heading upwards in the right direction, but it probably won't be an overnight change. Although, the AFC South is not that good, and that could lead to one of these teams having a better record than what, where they currently sit. The NFC South, also not very good. Carolina at number 29. Now remember, they don't have their first round pick next year. They will be all in on winning football games this season. I'm a believer in Bryce Young, but this might not be an instant flip of the switch. So a common trend there. Three teams that that took quarterbacks this year. Got to be a little bit patient there. Who will end up with the number one pick in the 2024 NFL draft? Funnily enough, those top four teams we just saw were the top four teams in this past year's NFL draft. Although two of them have already traded away their first round pick next year. Who will end up with that number one pick and likely Caleb Williams? Sound off in the comment section right now. Who gets that number one overall selection? Tampa at number 28. Do you trust Kyle Trask? I do not. I was lower on Tampa than most. Uh, This seems like it could be a bit of a down year with Tom Brady now gone. Another NFC South team, the Atlanta Falcons. They think they're a lot closer And given the fact that no NFC South team uh, was inside of our top 20, i.e. 19 or higher, spoiler alert, the Falcons' path to playoffs is easier than some of even the top 10 teams in front of them. The Bears at 26, they've upgraded the offense. The defense still needs some pass rush help, but they're heading in the right direction as well. Now it's time for Justin Fields to become a more complete passer of the football. I was lower than most on the commanders in our rankings. I don't believe in them in Sam Howe. They have a good supporting cast. They're asking a lot out of a fifth-round pick who started one game last year. Played pretty well, but it was one game. I think they've invested too much into Howe. And with new ownership coming in, this could be a reset next year if they don't make the playoffs. 
Number 24, the Tennessee Titans. That receiving core is not very good. They have a new franchise guy in theory in Will Levis, having uh, given up on Malik Willis after one year. Tennessee is also kind of still in that retooling time frame. Now, the NFL rookie jerseys are out. A lot of placeholder numbers still until they're finalized with the NFL. So you'll see some ones on here. They'll send you the actual number once it's set in place. Get yours today. Chatsports.com slash NFL jersey. That's chatsports.com slash NFL jersey. Did that one, for example? Going to wear number 21. That's going to be a fire number on the rookie corner. B. John Robinson's going to wear number 7. So this actually looks fairly similar because the Falcons numbers are weird to me. Get yours today. Chatsports.com slash NFL jersey. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. The Raiders at number 23. I think you maybe flat move with Jimmy Garoppolo in place of Derek Carr. Uh, the defense, I've got some very real concerns about. I'm a little bit worried about the Josh McDaniels tenure because, you know, it's Josh McDaniels. Green Bay at 22. And this is the going from Aaron Rodgers, who wasn't as good last year, to Jordan Love drop-off. Uh, Green Bay's got some talent still, but they were a non-playoff team last year with Rodgers. Will they make it this year with Love? Eh, NFC North is gettable. Denver at number 21. Remember when we had them all consensus top 10 last year? I do, and I'll, I'll own the mistake on that one. Thanks, Hackett. And now it's Sean Payton. Is Russell Wilson cooked? If the answer is no, this is going to be way too low. If the answer is yes, they might be drafting very, very early. The Saints are 20, but they are the top team in the NFC South, and that means they might make the playoffs despite, you know, Maybe not being, if they were in like the AFC East, I think they'd be the consensus four team. Now they're here at number one in their division. That's how football works after all. Derek Carr is probably one of the top five, if not six, worst case, seven uh, quarterbacks in the NFC. There was a lot of divisiveness over the LA Rams. They are retooling heavily on defense. They threw some picks, much needed on the offensive side of the football. Is Matthew Stafford healthy? Can the entire team just stay healthy this year? Uh, the Rams are the big wild card this year. One thing I know about the Los Angeles Rams here is, or funny, about the new pages, my bad. They'll win around eight or nine games. They do it every year with Bill Belichick, even if it's not Tom Brady at the helm, uh, not the best roster. They win around nine games. I bet they do the same thing this season. The Cleveland Browns, this really comes down to which version of Deshaun Watson do you get. If you get last year's version, he was bad. He was not a good football player last year for Cleveland. Now, he'd been away from the game for a long time. Maybe he bounces back and looks more like prime Texans Watson on the field. If so, the Browns have a shot to make some noise in the AFC. The spots, I'd say roughly like 17 to 8, are all pretty tightly compacted. And that's how it was reflected, by the way, in our rankings as well. The Steelers here at 16, Kenny Pickett showed some promise last year. Mike Tomlin will always have his team at and more likely just above 500. That, that is how Tomlin and Belichick do business. That's why they're among the best teams in the, or coaches, I should say, in the NFL. Now, if you love the National Football League, this is the right channel for you. Constant videos on everything going on around the NFL. Hit that sub button right now. YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV for more free videos. One chat sports voter who shall remain nameless had the Vikings significantly lower than everybody else, but there was actually a bit of a tear break, uh, now that I look at the actual numbers, from 15 to 14, so it didn't actually impact where the Vikings checked in because it's like 14 breaks, 15 breaks, 16 and lower there. Uh, the Vikings were... A, they're a prime regression candidate with more points allowed than points scored, or if you're close to five, you win a bunch of games... Bunch of one-score wins, tends to regress last year. They're on upset alert this year. The Giants at number 14. I was a little surprised they were so low. I love what Brian Dable has, did, has done. I think there's still some doubts in the office here at Chat Sports over just how good Daniel Jones actually is. Number 13, the Seattle Seahawks. Geno Smith played really well last year they're not committed to him super long-term contract wise so it's kind of a prove-it year for Seattle but the supporting cast is very much on the up and up 
How about the Lions at 12? A pretty consensus top 15 team for us here at Chat Sports. And that's right. The Lions and the Jags at 11, by the way, should both be viewed as, if not the favorite, among the favorites to win their division. And I can't remember both of those together being the case at the same time. That, that this is uh, uncharted territory for Jacksonville and Detroit. The Chargers at number 10. Kellen Moore, the new offensive coordinator. The Chargers have had some real success, and yet they've also come up short where it counts the most. That's been the refrain, much like the Dallas Cowboys, for it feels about 25 years now. But they have a franchise quarterback in Justin Herbert. Can they take the next step under Brandon Staley? Top nine coming up here. Who do you think, though, is the best team in the NFL? Teaser alert. It was a consensus. Everyone agreed here at Chat Sports. Let me know what you think it is in the comment section. The Miami Dolphins at number nine. I was a little bit lower uh, on Miami. For those of you wondering, Will Scott uh, abstained from the Miami Dolphins element of the voting. So he, uh, he did not rig it in favor of the Dolphins. If two is healthy... This team has all the talent that they could want. They can make some noise. If he's not healthy, ugh, it's not going to be very good. Then the Jets at number eight. I am surprised the Jets beat out Miami. Uh, that was in part because of my own voting, though, so I guess maybe I shouldn't be surprised. I thought it'd be different, though, on that vote. Aaron Rodgers is there. They were, they were almost a playoff team last year, starting some combination of, of Mike White, uh, Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson. I think Marshall Green got a start, or a start at one point for them. Now you got Rodgers, that's a big-time boost at quarterback. The Dallas Cowboys at number seven, this feels about right, doesn't it? They will maybe win a playoff game and come up short and not get to the championship game, which is just out to the top four, but into the top eight. Sounds right. The Ravens now have Lamar Jackson under contract. If he's healthy and their entire roster isn't decimated by injuries, they're going to be able to get back to their normal ways this year. The Buffalo Bills check in at number five on our list. Uh, Josh Allen had some turnover issues, just like the quarterback at number seven, Dak Prescott, did. Uh, he has to take, take fewer hits. I like what the Bills have right now, but the AFC, unsurprisingly, folks, dominate our top ten. There were three NFC teams inside of our top ten. It is an AFC-run league right now. And so which division, i.e. AFC East, AFC North, Probably not any of the NFC side of things. What division is the best in football right now? Sound off in the comment section. Number four, the San Francisco 49ers. Quarterback uncertainty reigns, but that's what we said last year. And the Niners still maybe would have beaten Philadelphia if they weren't completely out of quarterbacks in that football game. If Purdy or Lance or Darnold's healthy, even though my anti-Sam Darnold pro propaganda is in danger of being proven wrong because of Shanahan, they can make some noise. The Bengals at number three. It's a weird spot for Cincinnati to be, but hey, that's the Joe Burrow effect, baby. The Bengals have done a good job of building out that roster around Burrow, and I think he'll get paid in the very near future. No surprise at number two, then, the Philadelphia Eagles. They do lose some pieces on defense, but they bring back most of the roster, crush the draft once again, but they are number two behind the unanimous number one, the defending world champion Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I thought it entirely, I didn't actually say it to not influence it, but if anyone didn't put the Chiefs at number one on, on our list, uh, might have been suspended from their voting privileges because... Defending champs, and they're still really good. It's not like they lost a bunch of pieces. Chiefs, no-brainer for me at number one. Now, this is just as it sits currently, because Super Bowl repeats are very tough to achieve. That is not an easy thing to do in the National Football League. So who do you think will win the Super Bowl this year? Sam, I need to sip some water here. Who you got winning? Uh, let's go very early prediction. Bengals over Niners. Uh, a rematch of some of the, the, the 90s games. Exactly. That's a fun matchup. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking when I decided that. You know, I was alive for all of those. I've seen <laughs> all of those games, and I really wanted to throw it back to the, the, the good old days. So Joe Burrow and whoever starts at quarterback for the 49ers, the team is just so good everywhere around them, and they just, they're just going to run the ball 60 times a game if they have to. Niners don't need a quarterback until the NFC championship. Until it's Josh Johnson. Until it's Josh Johnson, or they have to play McCaffrey while – Wildcat looks. Uh, Bengals, Niners, Bengals, Bills, 
anyone but the Bills from Christopher Flores. Honestly, I'm sitting here like <laughs> thinking like you give them a full off season to give Christian McCaffrey actual wildcat preps instead of just throwing him in there six months after he was traded. Yeah. That's kind of terrifying. Like they could, could actually, work. they could actually play with could that work. a little bit, and yeah. that scares me. I see Eagles uh, and the losers, Lions, Detroit Super Bowl versus the Buffalo Bills. How about that? That is a nobody circles the wagons. Type that, of Super Bowl yeah, matchup. that is a that is a um, which <laughs> that is a history franchise defining yes. Super Bowl for yes. either team. One of those teams. It's their greatest moment for the fan base ever. Um, <laughs> I like that super fraud uh, or super fud. A couple Cowboys in there as well. It is time for our mailbag, though. Our second mailbag, I should say, of the day. If you want to get your question answered, two ways to make it happen. Gold Fox, I see your super chat. We will kick off the mailbag with that, my friend, I promise you. If you just want to get your question answered, use hashtag NFL. It puts you in the queue. Don't you dare start with me, Sam. Puts it, no, no, no. I see, I see, you're, reaching, I see you're reaching for the unmute button. No. Hashtag NFL or Super Chat. It's the Quay. Get your questions in the Quay. Get your questions in the Quay on today's mailbag. It. You Frenchie. Here, here on NFL Daily. Sam is French. Get on the Quay. It is a French word. Hashtag NFL or Super Chat to get your questions on the show for today's mailbag. Welcome into NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey. We are answering all of your questions on today's live mailbag, filmed during Wednesday's live show. And we begin with a super chat, $5 from GoldFox177. Thank you, GoldFox. Hearing Mike Vrabel didn't like Malik Willis, why? Didn't like how he played or something else. He's ready to give up on him. With, same with the Panthers with Matt Corral. Uh, I'll start with Matt Corral here. Difference is new regime. Uh, and Corral was a barely top 100 pick, and I think ownership for Carolina wanted a quarterback too. Uh, Corral didn't even get a chance to play. The, 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 the danger of being the third-round pick is if you are drafted, you're probably not, not ready to play in year one, and that means if they're bad, they're taking somebody else earlier. As for, for Mal Malik Willis, I've heard that too. I don't think Vrabel liked him. I don't think he liked the draft pick very much. And I think the issue for Vrabel was he wants guys that can help win football games right now. And Malik Willis was always like two years away. And because of that, he wasn't ready. So we kind of lose sight of the remembering who he was as a prospect. He needs time. He didn't get time. Of course, he wasn't very good. That was never, it was never supposed to be an instant impact player. At least it's not, not, how, not how I viewed him. Uh, so they were just kind of over it. I wonder if he gets traded in the near future. Chris B., anyone think the Cowboys should sign maybe a linebacker? A $2 super chat. Thank you, Chris B. I think they're okay at linebacker. I'd like a left guard uh, because I don't trust Tyron Smith to stay healthy for the entire season. So I'm looking at an offensive line as an area of potential concern. Plus, of course, kicker, who is not a person, but it is a player the Cowboys have to add because Tristan Vizcaino is not going to start for you week one. Jordan D., is it possible the Falcons get Chase Young? I don't think so. I would be surprised if Chase Young got moved. I think the asking price versus the value is too stupid a difference. And the Commanders don't exactly have a bunch of great edge rushers as it sits right now. They've got Chase Young. They have Montez Sweat. Beyond them, it's uh, uh, about a, it's James Smith-Williams, fifth-round pick, K.J. Henry. So I think they're going to ride with Chase Young one more year. Hope he earns a new contract next year. From Claptimus Prime, love it. Uh, is there any team that's in the same level as the Eagles? I think you could potentially group the Cowboys and Niners, maybe not ahead of them, maybe in the same tier as them. I'd still put Philadelphia, I did on, on my power rankings, ahead of the Niners and Cowboys, but those are the two teams that stand out to me in the NFC. It's not a great division. Uh, it'd be a bit of a surprise if it wasn't one of those three teams that came out and made it to the Super Bowl. AFC, there's like, 10 different teams you feel like have a decent shot at it. Gum Fanatic. Okay. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird thing to be a fan of. Like, you lose the flavor after like a minute. Anyway, I got off track. Kyler Murray trade the Cardinals get, get the number one overall pick. Yes. I think this is the, the likely outcome if they end up with that top overall s s selection. The Cardinals are bad right now. This roster is not built to win football games. It is in the midst of a fairly significant rebuild and retooling. Kyler Murray might not play this year. If he does, he's probably going to miss the start of the season. So what if the Cardinals start the year like one and five, and then Kyler is good to come back 
do you even bother? Do you, do you sit him on ice? Do you, do you throw him out there anyway and maybe boost his trade value? If the Cardinals get the number one overall pick, which could maybe come from Houston as well, I do think Kyler Murray ends up getting dealt. Now, this is a, you know, six, seven months from now conversation, but there's a real possibility of that. So will Kyler Murray be dealt, we'll say in the next calendar year, so or around the NFL draft next year, I guess, is a better answer. Why for yes and for no? Sound off for me in the comment section. Will Kyler be dealt in the next year? Dominic Schrader, what were your top five drafts? We did do entire draft grades after the 2023 NFL draft, so keep that in mind. Uh, the Steelers, I thought, crushed it. I loved what Philadelphia did. I actually enjoyed the Texans draft, Seattle's draft, Patriots draft, three draft classes I don't normally like. I really did this year. Plenty of, of good ones, but Steelers, for me, cleared. Jamie Kincaid. You think Jerry Jones will regret not moving up to get Kincaid, or maybe he doesn't care? I don't believe the Cowboys had Kincaid as their next best player. Um, now, I think Buffalo thought Dallas was going to take him. That's, that's how NFL information gets spread around there. The Bills thought Dallas was going to take him. Uh, it seemed more like Dallas was not looking at tight end necessarily in round one. Look, if Kincaid becomes an all-pro, like, super, like you know the next Kelsey, of course they will. Um, but... I don't necessarily think that they regret, in the, even in the moment, missing out in the end on Dalton Kincaid. So thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that one. I mean, L for Sam. We just did this one. Uh, everyone type L in the comment section for Sam. Carter Reimer uh, knocks Miami trade for Isaiah Simmons. Uh, it, Isaiah Simmons to Miami is an interesting idea. They have David Long. They have Jerome Baker. I don't know if they have the biggest need for a, an off-ball linebacker there. Now, if what I initially read this as like Dawson Knox for Isaiah Simmons. If the Cardinals didn't have Trey McBride, I would have said that actually could work. Um, I, I think Miami's thrown enough big assets at different players via trade. They're not going to go get Isaiah Simmons. RC Plane Builder. Will the Falcons get 30 to 45 sacks this upcoming year? Uh, I think that's a doable number for them. Uh, I got to check what the actual, the low number were last year for the Falcons. The Bears said, what, 22? And the Falcons are, what, a, a year away from, they had like 12 one year? Or was it was, it, was it the Raiders said 12 one year? Uh, 30 is kind of like the low end bar. Uh, 45 would put you just outside the top five based on last year's numbers. So, uh, the Falcons last year had, oh, they were near the bottom behind the Bears, so they should be better uh, if they can get to around 35 or even 37, split the number there. It's probably a good outcome for them. Folks, Chat Sports is your go-to for all things NFL, NBA, college football, and whatever else in between there. If you want more free videos, hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Vince, is that trade up for Winston a statement for their rookie QB? If Stroud fails, Houston lacks the high pick for his replacement. I would be very surprised, even if the Texans had their own first round pick, if they would have been bad enough to be in the Caleb Williams range anyway. I think they'll be at like two or three or four worst case. But yeah, in a way it is. It's a statement of, I think, look, half the room wanted C.J. Stroud, half the room wanted Will Anderson, and they found a way to compromise because they gave up a lot to go up and get him the more and more I think about it. Uh, but, yeah, for this year, if he fails, it's, you're not going to replace him. So, in theory, you could buy him two years or three years there. Anthony, are the Chiefs receivers mid? Kind of. Like, not all the way. I think, like, I don't know, like, like t Tennessee's bad. Then, then maybe the Chiefs are actually are like mid if we're not counting Travis Kelce, which I feel like we should be counting him. But like Marquez Valdez Scantling, Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Rasheed Rice. There's a decent amount of somewhat high draft capital invested, but there is no Tyreek Hill currently on that roster. Maybe I would not be surprised if somebody breaks out. Um, but you know, is Rasheed Rice better than Juju Smith-Schuster th this year? Probably not. Does Sky Moore break out? Does Tony break out? Possible, but it's not an elite group right now. But Kelsey really helps that, that out in a big way. Junior, the Patriots should trade for Isaiah Simmons. He'd be a fun fit. I, I, I will say 
I'm pretty sure in my draft notes, I compared Marte Mapu as FCS Isaiah Simmons. Pretty, I, I'll go back and check like right now, but I am very confident that was in my draft notes. So they kind of have that player uh, who fills that role, the third round pick at a Sacramento State already there. So I, I kind of don't think they'd go after him at this stage. Peter 5-5, five, five. Makai Becton trade since the Jets did not pick up his option. The issue is the Jets don't have another obvious option at offensive tackle. Like, is, is Max Mitchell going to be your guy? I don't think so. I think this is very much a prove-it season, a make-or-break year for Makai Becton, but I think that'll come on the Jets, not somewhere else. By the way, I just confirmed uh, FCS Isaiah Simmons comp for Marte Mapu. Now, when it comes to trades, could be Makai Becton, Isaiah Simmons, somebody else all together. Name a player who you think ends up getting traded. Drop that player name for me in the comment section right now. Mr. Awesome Guy 222, what, a, what team do you think will ruin their draft picks career? Uh, we often over or undervalue the role that the team, the landing spot, the destination plays into the success of an NFL prospect. Um, you know, you can go back to Deshaun Kaiser was screwed by the Browns, never stood a chance, right? Uh, other other players kind of fit a similar uh, stamp with there. Josh Rose maybe even even a decent option. Uh, so I don't want to be too mean to anybody, um, but I kind of worry about the like teams that could fire their head coach next year you change the scheme then all of a sudden you're you're kind of in, in a rough spot Caden plays Vikings get the number one pick draft Caleb Williams if Kirk Cousins doesn't work in Minnesota the issue is like what's the worst case outcome for Minnesota they or have like the number 11 overall pick somewhere in that range or even it's like the number five pick they're really bad getting to number one is not going to be easy if Caleb Williams continues to play like Caleb Williams has. Shanav says the Broncos should trade for Devin White. I have said it before. I will stay and stand by it. I think Devin White is the most overrated player in the NFL. Athletic, splash plays, not consistent. And Denver just drafted Drew Simmons, or maybe Drew, Drew Sanders. I suspect that they'll ride with him long term. John Dorman chased under the Bears for a third and a sixth. If I were the Bears... I'm hitting, I, I, I am breaking the accept button. It, it's like, spoiler for the, for the Mandalorian, it's like Grogu just spamming yes out there. Just spamming, spamming it, spamming it. It's been out long enough, it's not a spoiler at this stage. Uh, the Bears say yes. The Commanders are going to say no. I don't, think that, I don't think that's enough for them to give up on Chase Young quite so fast. Real one for life is Matthew Stafford cooked. That elbow might be. I'm a little bit worried about it. Uh, I, I, that, he didn't, Looked very good last year. Maybe it was Super Bowl hangover season, whatever. Uh, the Rams are a tricky spot to judge. If Stafford plays well, they'll be back in the playoff mix. Otherwise, man, that rebuild might be coming a lot sooner than what we thought it was going to. So I want you guys to name a team that missed the playoffs in 2022 that will make the playoffs this upcoming year. There's always about four to six each season. So drop that team name in the comment section. Logan Carruthers, which underrated NFL rookie can you see making an immediate impact in their first year? Probably going to be one of those day three running backs, right? Like if Brees Hall's a bit slow to recover, I think Israel Banacana can play a nice role and be a really undervalued player out of pit for the New York Jets. There was a lot of good backs taken on day three that really stand out to me. You know, I think someone like Steve Ivey could be a nice fit for the Rams. You just mentioned he's probably going to start week one. Second round pick. Osiris Torrance, same boat. Some under the guys and my guy, Brian Branch, who was disrespected by the NFL and let the Lions take him in, in round two. Linwood DeMar, thoughts on the Bears draft. Uh, if we're including the juiced up trade down, got DJ Moore, it's a home run, right? If we're not including that, yeah, that was solid. Darnell Wright fixes and fills a need in top right tackle in the class. I get all of that. They traded on again, too. Extra capital. I would have liked an edge. Um, you know, they took two defensive linemen with upside, but I haven't proved it yet. So kind of an upside, aggressive swing for the fences class, which you got extra picks. I don't hate that. Robert Jansen, Simmons is a Patriot to, uh, or Raider, if anyone, LOL. I think they're going to give Simmons a chance, but I think he'd be a fun fit for a lot of different NFL teams. And finally, Super Fud. Oh, two more, sorry, Super Food. 
Uh, who will win the NFC North, Lions or Vikings? He's a Bears fan. I've got the Lions winning. They're also the very trendy pick, which worries me a little bit from that perspective. And Alec G wraps us up here. Rams trade two future firsts in Stafford to the Lions for Jared Goff. I, I suit you to there, Alec. I, 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 that's a good one, my friend. I, I uh, appreciate that. All right, random non-sports question of the day. Sorry, I saw that one come in yeah, right at the very to, end. I had, had to. I had to get it on the show. That's a good one. Favorite Pop-Tart flavor? Sam? Uh, brown sugar cinnamon. Okay, hot take here. I don't like the brown sugar c c cinnamon. That's weird. You like all other I children's don't, food. I don't like that. that I, I don't care for it that much. Tom has the give palette. Me, give me like the, 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 the cherry. Like Tom, Tom the, has... The wild berry's the best one. No. Yes, yeah, it is. It's wild berry. Tom has the palate of an eight-year-old. Wild berry is the best one. I like wild berry. A, a it's not the I best tried? one. Oh, a new one? Ra uh, any of the berry flavors are the best. Raspberry, pop pretty good. That's, that's produced that's from Jeremy, from, by the yeah, way. That's from Jeremy. Brown any, sugar cinnamon. Insert, uh, insert berry flavor. I'll mix in. So usually I'll get brown sugar cinnamon. I'll mix in like a strawberry in the mix. I'll mix in like a blueberry. I like a double chocolate but, one. A double chocolate. That's that's too much for me in the morning. I feel like you'd want you would love that much sugar at um, seven it, in the morning. The, the, someone said s'mores, Oreos. That s'mores it, is in it's, there. It, 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 it's too much for me. I am overloaded by the. the the, the, more, the, the, more the, que the more important question really is. The more important quay. More important quay. quay. Heat up Pop-Tarts or eat them out of the bag? That's a, that's a good question. Out of the bag. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't heat up my, my I Pop-Tarts. I think it depends on the, I think the situation can call for a toaster. It's I, funny I how will, these were like. I will heat up my donut. I will uh, not heat up my well, Pop-Tarts. I think it's funny. I'm pretty sure these were intended to be made like the normal way is to put them in the toaster. But it's just become a thing where you just grab like, like a lot of mornings, I'll just grab a bag on the way out the door and I won't bother putting them in the toaster. I don't like the majority more. of Pop-Tarts that Anthony, are consumed are not put in a toaster. Anthony says frozen. Anthony says frozen here. I see toasted, strawberry, strawberry, s'mores, s'mores. Someone, Anthony said frozen, Pop Tart. Okay, the frozen s'mores. S'mores. I, okay, that actually, does sound, that actually does sound really good. It, it, Anthony, if you're talking about the s'mores one, you're a smart man. There you go. There you go. This is the this is exactly the type of content and analysis you were looking for when you tuned in today. Uh, to chat sports. Uh, pop tarts. No, that's a miss. That's a typo, Tom. You read it wrong. It's chat tarts. <laughs> uh, also, last question that I have for y'all. This is this is more this is more of a selfish question on my end. It's National Paranormal Paranormal Activity oh, Day. I didn't know that. Do you believe in ghosts? All I had was all I had was National Montana Day. Yeah, it's National Montana Day too. It's also that's kind of lame. I know. Right. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's National State. Paranormal Activity Day. Do you believe in ghosts? Why for yes and for no? Tom. Answer honestly. I'm not. I'm not. Don't really lie. In. I'm not really in. My wife is. I'm not as. I'm not as sold. Not as sold now, means that with he that doesn't said, not believe in ghosts. With that said, ghosts. I love watching like ghost hunter shit. Oh. It is awesome. I love it. Ghosts are ghosts are fake. Aliens are real. The the Buzzfeed Unsolved like ghost stuff was awesome. I loved it. Tom's kid. I, of course I believe in ghosts. All I heard from mommy and daddy's room last night was oh oh. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> Why are we letting that on? <laughs> that one that jail. One really got me. Jail. That's oh, all I have to say. Jail for Jeremy. Oh. Just jail for Jeremy and Jackson. Would you believe we have one more segment after I, this? I do. I do believe that <laughs> one. So get your answers in. Favorite Pop-Tart flavor. We'll break down the final segment of today's show as we look at some of the top trade candidates across the NFL. Welcome into NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey. The 2023 NFL Draft is in the books. And now we're breaking down the top trade candidates left after not that many moves during the draft. DeAndre Swift was the big one, but players like DeAndre Hopkins were not dealt. So now what happens? We begin with the big name. That's Hopkins. He's been on the market since really the year ended. 
Uh, that's not exactly a uh, surprise that he's on the trade block. It's a surprise he hasn't been moved yet. The Cardinals, simply put, have not been getting good offers for Hopkins. The age, the contract, the two main things there. The Cardinals allegedly wanted a, um, a second-round pick for Hopkins. They didn't really get that at all. I think that's why he's still there. Now Hopkins is saying he doesn't want to go. It's all very... Uh, spin zony for Arizona. We've got two more Cardinals players left to come because they are rebuilding. It's not very good. Will Hopkins be traded? Y for yes or N for no? It's uh, Just go ahead and sound off for us in the comments section. Number two on our Cardinals-dominated show to begin, Buddha Baker. He requested a trade from the Cardinals. See, the Car He's like, make me the highest paid safety or trade me. And then that was followed up a few weeks later by a trade request. So connect the dots. Cardinals, they want to make him the highest paid safety. Uh, Baker's a really good football player. And I don't think his timeline necessarily matches up that well with where the Cardinals organization is at as they really do begin a fairly noteworthy rebuild at this stage. So Buda Baker... It was probably better in 2021, you know, more TFLs, more interceptions. He's always been a great football player for Arizona. I would not be shocked if he gets moved, but maybe it's after this upcoming season, potentially. Another linebacker safety on our list, or at least the first of several, Isaiah Simmons. The Cardinals did not pick up his fifth-year option. He hasn't quite lived up to the hype. I don't think, personally, Arizona has utilized him that well. His numbers actually don't look that bad. A couple sacks, PBUs, about 100 tackles the past two years, average there. I like what I, I just like the idea of I, I, Isaiah Simmons, but the reality of Simmons has not yet quite appeared in the way that I was hoping it could. There is a new regime in Arizona. I think they are going to tear down a lot of the key pieces. I think the most likely outcome is they give Simmons a chance to prove himself to Jonathan Gannon and then maybe extend him and be happy about doing that. But I do think teams will call about Simmons with the fifth-year option not being picked up. I got more names to get to, but I want to hear from you guys as well. Name a player who you think ends up getting traded in the comment section. Sound off at the pinned comments of today's video. If the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let us know. All right, let's get to our linebacker portion of the show. Devin White, or I guess continuing if we count Isaiah Simmons there. He requested a trade, and the Bucks have either not found a taker or don't want to trade him. And I would wonder if there's just not that much interest to make it worth their while in the first place. Devin White's due $11.7 million. And you see the, 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 the TFL numbers, the tackle numbers, the sack numbers, and you go, wow, he's, he's really good. I, I like him. The splash plays are there. The down-in, down-out consistency is not. He still gets sucked in by play action, misdirections, and struggles in coverage. He's good going north, not so much going other directions. I will continue to say it. I think De Devin White is the most overrated player in the NFL. Someone has to have that award. I'll give it to Devin White, who I still think can be a good football player, but he's not lived up to the hype around his name quite yet. Patrick Queen is next up. He was supposed to be the next Devin White coming out uh, from the same school, LSU. Has also not lived up to the hype and the expectations. Again, the, the tackle numbers are not bad. TFLs are fine, especially at linebacker. Tackle numbers are often a bad way to eval a player because that means they are oftentimes getting beaten coverage. Or where are they making their tackles? Too oftentimes it is downfield. The Ravens made their thoughts very clear on Patrick Queen. When they traded a second for Roquan Smith, gave him $100 million, and then drafted Trenton Simpson in the third round this year. That was as big of a sign as possible of, he's not our guy anymore. Now, if you want to get the jersey for your team's newest guy, their first round pick, you can get it at chatsports.com slash NFL jersey. Rookie jerseys are available 
plus Aaron Rodgers Jets ones if you want it too. Chatsports.com slash NFL jersey. Not all the rookie numbers are out there. Some of them are. Mozzie Smith, 58, for example. You can get the official jersey, official Nike jersey, with the real number once it's finalized and announced at chatsports.com slash NFL jersey. It's kind of in the pre-order stage. They, they'll, they'll make them as soon as they lock in the actual number. So you see the, the placeholder one for first round pick on that perspective. Get yours today. Chatsports.com slash NFL jersey. Let's talk Dalvin Cook, who has been linked in trade rumors or cut rumors since the year ended. Uh, the Vikings owe him about $11 million. They could save a decent amount of money. Minnesota drafted a running back in Dwayne McBride. They brought back Alexander Madison. There have been Dalvin Cook to Miami rumors for months also worth mentioning, Miami drafted Devon A-Chain fairly early this year. The issue I have with Dalvin Cook, and why I don't think there's been that much interest in him, look at the yards per carry. 5.1, 4.7, 4.4. Though that regression at the running back position should be scary. Another running back, Austin Eckler. Now, he wants a trade to get paid. The problem is the running back market is not very Look at what DeAndre Swift went for. A fourth two years from now. That's, that's not a very highly valued draft pick. Eckler is a three down back. He's got awesome pass catching value. His numbers haven't really dipped in recent years, but he's getting closer and closer to 30. And NFL teams, whether we like it or not, simply are not valuing running backs in the way they once did. And that has brought down the contract value and the trade value for these types of players. So pick a running back of those two bigger names. you got another back to come still. Who would you rather trade for? Assuming the money, that money is actually probably similar for a year. AE for Austin Eckler or DC for Dalvin Cook? Let's talk to Chiefs and Clyde Edwards-Alaire, the first-round pick, the guy that everyone was convinced, including myself, was going to be this awesome superstar running back and elite fantasy player, has fallen out of favor in KC. His numbers have dipped each and every single year. In part due to injuries, Isaiah Pacheco takes the job from him. Uh, they have Jarek McKinnon. I could see a scenario where LaMichael P. Ryan or even a, a Deneric Prince, the UDFA, shock and overtake them there and ceh might get another shot in kansas city but the expectations are far lower than what they once were speaking of expectations ed oliver has not lived up to them and i loved him coming out of houston i look at the numbers for a guy owed 10.75 million and i wonder if the rumors were more about the bills shopping him if if the bills could do it over again they would have declined the fifth year option on ed oliver and picked up the option on Tremaine Edmonds. That's what they would have done, because Oliver has simply not been the impactful piece I was convinced he was going to be. Breakout year can still happen. He's still pretty young, but he's been underwhelming so far. Now, if you want more NFL news, rumors, trades, NFL draft coverage even, this is the right spot for you. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Chase Young, the player every, everybody's team wants to go get because you know, he's a former second-round pick or second-overall pick. Commanders declined his fifth-year option, and he hasn't been very good the past two years. Uh, he was very good in his first year, eight sacks, and it's like this guy's going to be a double-digit sack machine at edge. He's had two sacks in 12 games the past two years. He hasn't been healthy. That scares teams. The internal value of Chase Young is probably much higher than the external value from other NFL teams. Malik Willis, he'll replace Trey Lance on our list here. Uh, the Titans moved up for, Malik, or for Will Levis in round two. A very clear sign they are done with Malik Willis, fair or not. And the, what we have to remember about Malik Willis he was always going to be two years away. He was never supposed to be ready to go in year one because he needed time to grow and adjust. He was an upside bet. He played five games. The Titans offense was awful. If I were a different team and I could afford to be patient for probably two years, 
and then see where you're at in the final year of his contract. As scary as that is, maybe Malik Willis could make some sense. But he didn't go to a great destination. The GM who drafted him got fired, I think in part because the head coach didn't like Malik Willis. I don't know if he's ever going to play again in Tennessee. Somewhere else, maybe you could find a role. So will Malik Willis get another start in the NFL? As for he'll start somewhere, B, he will only be a backup. Finally, KJ Hamler. We've talked about Hamler trade for like two years now, Sam. Uh, he simply has been unable to stay healthy. A grand total of 23 games. That is it. That is all Hamler has been able to do over the course of his NFL career. Denver has depth now at wide receiver. They add Marvin Mims, who's going to be the obvious Hamler replacement. They have Sutton, Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy. They sign Marquez Callaway. There's no room for any role involving K.J. Hamler. So maybe it's more like roster cut down in case there are injuries and Denver wants to keep Hamler. I think a trade is coming at some point in the near future. All right, back to the week Will Willis conversation here. S for start, B for backup. I don't know. If he goes to the right spot and gets to learn and grow and develop, it could certainly happen. But I don't think the most likely outcome here is going to be a he takes over the starting job somewhere. I'm reading an article about how Bruce Arians says that the Bucks had Baker Mayfield rated higher than the four quarterbacks in this year's draft when he came out of Oklahoma. Fun fact. Okay. I mean, okay. I, I, I probably wouldn't have, but it might only be like by one or two. So He'd probably be it, one, it, right? it would be, it, it honestly would probably be behind Bryce, Bryce Young. Young. I mean, that, in front of that's CJ. probably it. But if you want to value the size, like, Kind of goes out the window at that point. Because size, I, too. I feel like the size is, is a much smaller factor now in quarterback evaluation than it yeah. was five years ago. And that, but I think having nice. him like second coming out as a prospect as an overall pick is, isn't a huge surprise. So I would say that that doesn't matter at all right now, though, because we know what we've seen Baker play in the NFL. So like that, like that, just like d does not matter. Like uh, we saw, throw, throw, throw out your prospect eval. We saw Geno Smith break out in year ten. You know, the, the jury's still out. Jury's still out in my eyes. Geno Smith is going to trick teams going, well, he could be our next Geno. I know. Who's the next Brock Purdy? Who's the next Debo it's Samuel? Going, we well, do it every time and it never going happens. To, it's going to change how teams evaluate quarterbacks for the next five years. It shouldn't. He should be the outlier there. All right, folks. NFL Daily is live every single week. Make sure your noties are turned on so you don't miss out on anything here that we do on NFL Daily. No loop here. You guys, make sure you're subbed. Free videos every single day right here at Chat Sports. We will see you again tomorrow for other just on-demand coverage and on Monday for our next live NFL Daily.